Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video I would like to discuss with you a little bit the concept of rate equations. Now before we get started, uh, let's recap a little bit about uh, what is a rate. And we said a rate is usually defined as change in something divided by a change in something else. Change in something else. And if that sounds really bizarre to you, please have a look at uh, one of the previous videos where we talk about rate, velocities and speeds. Now, uh, we can this we can talk about a rate in a chemical sense, so chemical or kinetic sense, and we uh, said that we usually deal with a change in concentration of a reaction, so change in concentration divided by a change in time. And this would be a, a typical rate. It also would be a typical velocity and it also would be a speed. So very often we use these terms speed, velocity and rate interchangeable, but the difference between rate and velocity and speed is that rate and velocity can be either positive or negative, whereas speed is always only positive. So speed doesn't have a direction, but rate and velocity have directions. Okay, so what is a, a rate equation? Well, a rate equation just simply describes how the rate um, changes and, and how, how the, or I should better say, how the change in concentration relates to a change in time. Now, give, let me give you an example for it. Let's say, again, I'm driving from Canterbury, where the University of Kent is located, the main campus, to London. And let's say uh, it takes me um, two hours, so that would be, say, two o'clock. Here I start at one o'clock and I would finally arrive at three o'clock. And it's about 60 miles, so that is 60 miles. Now, let's say I drive with a very constant speed. And you see that with a straight line, uh, it's a very constant speed. And I can actually determine what is called the average speed. And you can calculate that very easily. So the average speed or average velocity or average rate would be, well, if I talk about rate, I give it a direction. And usually if we go away from our starting point, so the average rate from Canterbury would be, well, I did 60 miles in two hours. And because I go away from Canterbury, it gets a negative sign. And I can say in this case, this would be minus 30 miles per hour. If I just look at the, at the speed, it would be plus 30 miles per Per hour because speed doesn't have any direction. But if we look at the direction, we have a minus. If we look at the average speed or average rate, I should say, in terms of London, it would be the same, but I'm now going towards London here, and therefore it would be plus 30 miles per hour. So, okay, who cares about that? Well, actually, 
if I know my speed and if I know how long I have traveled, I can actually find out where I am. So let's say I start at one o'clock in Canterbury and I travel for one hour. So one hour at the, the average speed of 30 miles per hour. I can very easily find out where I am. Because what I need to do is I just take the, the rate times the, the time that I have, that I uh, did, in this case one hour, and that gives me 30 miles. So I traveled from Canterbury already 30 miles. So I would be around this position here. And with this simple trick I can very easily uh, say as long as I know where I, uh, how fast my rate is and how long I've traveled, traveled at that, I can determine where I am. A little bit more difficult if we've got something like that. Again, we start at one o'clock, here's two o'clock, here's three o'clock, here's Canterbury, here's London, and uh, we have our 60 miles here. So what happens if it is something like, like that? Well, obviously the average speed or the average rate that we have is still 60 miles in two hours. Or average rate would be, if I come from Canterbury, minus 30 miles per hour. Or if I look at the London perspective, it would be positive 30 miles per hour. However, I have very different rates. I have very different velocities. Here, for example, here nothing happens. Here I'm fast, here slow, here very fast again. Now, how can I deal with that? Well, I can say, okay, for half an hour, so for 30 minutes, I traveled at this speed, at this velocity here, and I got here. Then I traveled hardly any way in the, in, in, in the next half an hour. So what I do is I add these little bits together. So here I'm faster, so for a half an hour, again, I'm fairly fast here, have a higher rate, and I add these little bits. So I add, uh, say, the first time interval, uh, rate at first time interval, time interval, times this time interval. Then I add the rate at the second time interval times the second time interval. And then I do rate at the third time interval times the third time interval and I add them all up. So I add them all up and then I find out where I am. So after the third time interval, for example, I would be here. But I didn't go with the average speed. I got with the instantaneous speeds, uh, with, a, with a momentarily speeds. So and if we make these time intervals smaller and smaller and smaller, then we also get these bits smaller and smaller and smaller. But we are still adding them up. And in order to indicate that
that we are now dealing with a different set of uh, intervals. What we had in the first place was we said our rate equals, well, if we go for the average, we go for the whole difference in distance, so change in distance, divided by a change, and that is this delta, in time. And this capital delta indicates a large, a large distance. So in our case, it was really uh, 60 miles in two hours. Now, we can also write this as rate. And we add up these little distances. So little distance 1 plus little distance 2 plus and so on and so forth divided by time interval 1 plus time interval 2 plus and so on and so forth. And these lowercase delta indicate that it, we are not going over the whole distance, we are going over just maybe 10 miles in, say, 10 minutes here. And in order to find out where we are, we need to say, okay, we, or we add them all up so that we get an idea of where we are. Now, if we make these time intervals and the distance intervals smaller and smaller and smaller, we get to something that is written as a D, lowercase d, which stands for a really tiny, tiny, diddly squat of uh, a change. So d distance, and that could be, say, maybe a centimeter. One centimeter divided by d in time. Maybe a second or so, plus then we add another one, d distance, that's our distance 2, divided by another time interval, that's interval 2, and that would be interval 1, and we add them all up, all these little things, meter by meter if you like. And eventually what we will get is we will come to our differential equation of a, a rate. And we can write, now in a chemical sense, we can write the rate equals d change in concentration. So the change in concentration of a substance divided by the change in time. And these d's usually indicate that it is a differential equation differential equation. Now don't worry about that. If uh, this uh, doesn't mean a lot to you, I'll show you exactly what you do with it, uh, but you don't have to remember how you actually use these differential equations. But what we can say is, for example, for uh, our rate, let's say our rate here would be d a, if that was our substance, divided by dt. And if the change, if we are driving uh, at a constant speed, and if we have a reaction that goes basically from A uh, to somewhere else, so A is consumed, if A is consumed, so A, we have a starting point of A, and then A disappears, so we have a negative sign here because A disappears, we are going away from A, and if we are driving this reaction at a very constant rate, then the rate is just simply a constant and this is abbreviated by a K. So usually this is a K constant, and this negative sign indicates that the 
uh, substance A. Substance A is consumed. So, this is what there is all to a rate equation. So, a rate equation is usually written as dA over dt, which means we have to sum up all the tiny, tiny little changes per in the concentration, per changes in the time. Uh, if we use up the substance that we are looking at, then it is a negative sign. And uh, if it is at a, at a, at a certain constant uh, speed, uh, at a constant velocity or constant rate, then we abbreviate that with a k. And this k, I probably should say, this, this k is also called the rate constant. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.